really just all of the different ways that you can prototype and how you might test them. So one of the things we talked about, and it sounds like some of you all are doing, are paper prototypes, things that are on physical objects. Um, so it requires those paper physical objects. Um, and you're having the participant review and verbalize their anticipated interactions. So again, remembering that usability testing is task-based. So you're gonna you know, say, from here, what would you do next? And see where they would click or go. And it's up to the facilitator to sort of advance the prototype. So you're kind of like shuffling through your screens and things to kind of put the next one in front. And obviously because of that, it's much better suited for in-person and moderated usability testing. Then there is, now you're moving into the digital space, but just static. So um, pretty similar, actually, you just have like the screens or the, the things, the different, pages or versions that you want to test, does it require some form of a device to have those images like displayed and it has all those digital images of the solution, um, but still requires um, you as a facilitator to advance based on where the participant is like verbalizing and saying that they would interact with um, your solution. And again, better suited for moderated. Then you're kind of stepping it up and now you have a clickable digital prototype. And a lot of the tools that we shared with you last week um, help you get to this more clickable version. So again, it's images on a device, but the difference is they're linked. So you can have hotspots, um, you know, if someone decided to click here, it would take them to this other page. If, if they click here, it'll take them to a different page. So it's like a linked, a bunch of images, but they're all linked together um, through hotspots. And so that's exactly you know, what happens. The participant is responding to the task. They would click on a hotspot area. The prototype itself advances to the next page. Um, still better suited for moderated because um, you know, kind of linked things don't work. You got to get them back to an initial starting spot. So um, that's clickable digital prototypes. And functional prototypes. So this is now stepping it up once more. Um, this is not just images, but you're actually having um, like HTML web pages, partially developed solutions. Uh, and this, and this is much more robust, like to be tested, right? So participants reviewing, interacting with the prototype, the prototype advances based on the interactions. Um, it works really well for unmoderated because everything kind of is hooked up how it's supposed to be hooked up. And um, I really want to drive this point home best for accessibility. So if you are um, if you think about it, right, when you have paper prototypes or static images or linked images, even they're images. So if someone has, is, you know, low vision, maybe they can't even be part of your testing because they can't see the image. But with HTML, you can set it up so that um, a screen reader can read through the elements on the page and they can actually go through and, and do those, you know, tasks with you. Um, and it's the same, like, on, a, on an image, you can't type into a box. You know, so for someone who's used to using their keyboard or whatever, um, you can't do that with an image. So functional prototype, if possible, is, is kind of the place you want to get to at some point in your process so that you can test it. Uh, so on the right, I just have like, quote unquote, throwaway coded prototypes. And there's tons of frameworks out there so that you can quickly spin up um, something that's functional so that you can use it. And, and I say throw away because it's really just for the purposes of testing. And that may not be what your you know, organization ends up using to build the solution, but is necessary for doing like functional prototypes. Last one is um, live prototypes. So this is a fully developed solution. And again, you may get to this. I think maybe one point to say here is that um, each one that I'm showing you is kind of leveling up the level of prototype. And you can decide at any stage in that where you want to go. Do you want to go straight from, you know, paper prototype sketching to a linked one, to a fully functional one, to a live one? It's really up to you and based on where you are in your process and what you want to test. Um, so this is maybe one of the final stages. And also to say that you should test multiple times. Like do a few rounds of usability testing on different fidelities of prototypes. Um, so maybe one of the last ones you do is on your live version. So you've done some testing, you're feeling good about it, you actually develop it. Um, and yeah, so then all the steps are the same. The participant's able to review, interact with the prototype, prototype advances, um, obviously really good for accessibility 
and works well for unmoderated because you don't have to worry about them kind of getting caught up. And on the right here is an example, I think of a WordPress page. So there's tons, like if you're using a content management system and that's what you're testing, um, it's possible to create test pages in your existing environment and kind of spin it up that way and have it password protected so that not everyone in the public can see it, but you can use it um, for usability testing. So when you're doing uh, testing when, and creating prototypes really, uh, these are some of the questions to think about. So what are you testing? Are you thinking about content, navigation, layout, functionality? Those mean different things. So if you're doing functionality, it might be um, you know, tough to test it on paper prototypes, but you can get there. Um, who would you like to test with? All these things mean different versions of prototypes. So like mobile first, for example, then you would have to go um, like a mobile testing route and having different devices available and seeing how people interact with those devices. So it's really, you know, dependent on what you're testing, who you're testing with, and then limitations that you have. Like maybe you don't have capacity to get up to a live prototype right now, and you wanna just quickly get something out there to be tested with, that can be done on a paper prototype. Go with that and put it out there and, and do some sessions um, with your paper prototypes. So it really is dependent on your goals, where you are, limitations, who and what you're testing. 